Hi, I'm Maggie from maggiescrochet.com and I am going to show you how to cover um, glass jars in doilies. And these doilies I picked up at different um, flea markets. And I think that this is a wonderful use uh, uh, for something vintage. This vase here I bought at Goodwill for a dollar and then this is just a wide mouth uh, mason jar. So these are readily available at your um, uh, stores like I think Target would have them and Walmarts um, would have them. So anyway, I'm having this, I'm having a uh, photo shoot in my new office next weekend. So I wanted a beautiful vase to be in my office. So I am going to cover this vase with this doily right here. And then I have a lot of purple flowers growing out in my garden and I'm going to put all purple flowers in here. So I will show you in this video how to put this one on here, but you could just as easily imagine a doily like this, which is a lot bigger here, on this. And what I would do for this one is just to run a um, thread, like a sport weight um, cotton yarn through here and tuck the excess down here. You just wanna make sure that you fill it up with water only to maybe about halfway or something so it doesn't get on the um, doily. And you can always take these doilies off and wash them and then re-put them on or use them for some other purpose. But if you were to put this one on here, you could do a drawstring around here and then um, gather it in the back. And this is kind of like a one-sided project. You probably wouldn't want the back showing. Or you could do get a little fancier with this and let this drape on the outside and only let a, have a little bit of it. Um, actually, you might not even see these flowers on the wrong side. And then just kind of tack it to the back loosely and then just have more of a, a flowing kind of vase like that. I think that would be gorgeous too. Especially if you have coordinating flowers and you could always use like artificial flowers for this too. So that would be that one. This one, you want to make sure you have the right side facing. So this one too, you could imagine the same thing where you could have part of it draping and then just as long as you put a drawstring in here. And you'll see more of what I've ta I'm talking about when I put this doily on here. So this one is a little bit different challenge because it's square. So I have decided to let the top loops be free and I'm going to run my drawstring to go around here. I'm going to run it through the tops of the first edging row here. So all I, ha I have some Lisbeth crochet cotton yarn or thread size 3 and I'm going to thread my needle like this. I'm going to fold it over the eye, pinch it real tight and push the pinched edge through the eye of the needle and pull that out. And I need enough thread to go completely around here and then down here and I don't know if I'm going to run a strand around the bottom but just in case I want plenty of thread. So I've got this double and I'm only going to use it as single but it's doubled here so probably um, I can just leave it attached. I'm going to leave it attached to the ball. I'm not going to worry about that right now. So what I'm going to do here is find the corner loops, which I've, it looks like I have maybe two corner loops. So I'm going to go ahead and get those on my needle right here. No, wait a minute. I don't want that one. I want this row right here. So I've already kind of like, you just need to place it on your jar and decide how you want it to look. So as long as I get that needle, I'm going from the front to the back on each loop. As long as you get that needle through all the loops like this. This is going to create a drawstring. I'm going to do another video on these um, doilies on rings that I've been doing. They're so pretty. 
And when you see my whole office together, oh, so beautiful. Okay, so now I've reached the corner of that one. So I'm gonna pull that through. So it's even there because I've gone through the same row of loops right there. And I'm gonna pull the thread all the way through until it's single. Okay, now I'm gonna wrap this around my, my jar and I'm gonna leave the, the loops that I didn't go through, I'm just gonna leave them sticking out. Okay, then I come to the back. And around the back, I might have this sitting out on my lap at this point, but for this video, I'm gonna try to do it standing up here. Okay, so what I need back here is a knot, and I need to make sure I have enough here before I make that knot. So I'm gonna pull, I like want a little bit more thread, so I'm gonna pull, I think I'll have enough. I think I'll have plenty. Okay, so, um, I need to tie a knot back here and I'm going to go through that and if you don't have anybody to hold that knot for you to make the second um, loop on it, you can do this like pull this around a couple of times. Okay, so there and then it holds a little tighter there. So I just wrapped it around several times. So then it usually holds better like that. And then I'm going to tie a knot here. All right. And I'm not worried about this gathering here until this point. So now I'm going to take, go around to the front here like this. I'm going to pull all the gathers to the back and just kind of even it out. Make sure those unused loops or just pulled to the to the top and I just want them just free hanging like that they got curled in there somehow okay so now see my plan is that this this bottom here is going to hit the floor and these loops are just going to hang out at the bottom gonna look so cute okay now come to the back it's like a little corset here in the back and right now I can cut this is the strand that's going to my my ball of Lisbeth yarn that I'm using so I'm gonna cut that about six inches out just to get that out of my way okay now I can get a hold of my needle. Okay, so now what I need to do here is just to pull this together. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect back here because this is the part that's not going to be seen. You might be able to do one where you can, you know, where it looks good all the way around, but this, I don't imagine that this is going to look good all the way down. So I'm, I'm going to, once again, I'm going to skip the last round of white loops and I'm going to go into the, the second round because it'll be tighter there. So these other extra loops will just hang out. So I went from this side over to this side and I'm going to go back and forth. So I'm going to go over to this side and then I'm going to pull the coordinating, the corresponding loop over there. And then I don't want my little loops to get stuck, so I'm going to let them just hang out like that. It's just going to look a little artsy, I think. Okay, so then I love going to um, the resale shops, antique stores, and I love getting all this stuff. And I've got all kinds of doilies, and just lately I've been thinking of all these great things to do with them. Because I have a new office that I'm moving into and it's got all white walls. So I imagine lace everywhere. So I start coming up with these ideas on decorating with my vintage lace that I have. Now this doily had like kind of like a, an area that was pulled out. 
you might want to dress that and just make sure that it doesn't pull out anymore and this this actually right here is the old price tag so I'm gonna get rid of that so it's okay here but I think it still had an area so you might want to um, you know secure any unravels or something sometimes the vintage doilies have that so I'm just gonna continue going all the way down here to lace up the back Just go from side to side, all the way down, like this, and like this. And we have all kinds of Lisbeth thread in gorgeous colors. Um, there's well over a hundred colors, and eventually we'll carry all of them. And I think she has over 170, I want to say, colors. And we have. Um, a hundred some on our website at maggiescrochet.com so you could actually make a doily and um, then sew it to a vase for this originally I thought about just crocheting a vase from uh, or a cover from scratch but then I thought well why not just use the old doily and it would be quicker okay so now I've laced it all the way down right here and then these are just going to hang out, these little loops right here. I think it looks kind of cute in the back, but where I'm going to put this, it's not going to show in the back. But I still think it's cute. And I like this idea because it doesn't ruin the doily. If you ever want to take this off, you still have this cute little doily in here. And I actually think we're going to create a pattern for this doily right here. I think it's really cute. Okay, so at the end down here, I'm going to do the corners if I can get my fingers out of the way okay and maybe I'll do this one like this all right so you know if you have like if I were to have a vase that was more narrow I might decide to sew leave all the loops hanging out and just sew the purple to the purple it just depends on what kind of vase that you find and your doily so you have to be flexible in uh, with this project because they're not always going to be the same okay so what I want to ha happen here is for this purple to hit the bottom right here. So I can think of two ways to do that. I'm going to stretch it, number one. And if I put a tight enough ring around the bottom, I think it would stay. Or I could just go with my thread from here and then come over here and go across. And then it creates like a brace at the bottom. And I'm kind of thinking that might be the way to go. So I stopped right here, and I'm going to go from where I stopped across to the other side. And I'm going to let, I want these loops to be free at the bottom. And I'm just going to go right here on that purple, like that. And just make sure I have that little brace built in there. And I'm just going to go over that a couple of times so it doesn't pull out, just to secure it. And this will just hold the doily down to the bottom. So then, nobody's going to see what I have at the bottom, except maybe when my, I think it'll be all right when it gets filled with water and everything. Maybe I should do that. Well, no, I think it'll be all right. Okay, so then I'm just going to go across here because I want to across at the bottom. I'm just going to go over here and get on that side of it which is the opposite side but it's pulling. So let me go like right, I want it to be at the halfway point kind of. Let me see if that would do it. Maybe this won't work. I'm just, this is the first time I've ever done this so you have to bear with me. I think that will work. And then over to there. It's just whatever keeps it down. I think I'm changing my mind about this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this out real quick. Let me 
You can pull those out because I didn't do them real tight. Okay, so I'm gonna put the needle back on here. You can still see my sticker. I got this for a dollar. Okay, I, since this width up here or circumference or whatever you call it is wider, I think if I just do a circle around the bottom in this purple that it'll hold it on there. So I'm just gonna go inside these purple loops and I don't need to get every single one of them for this to work. At least I don't think I do. And I'm just gonna create a drawstring at the bottom. And I'm just going in like every other one And I don't want to get my loops caught in this. Okay, go right here, right here. You can go in every one or every other one, whatever you want to do. Okay, now I'm going from one side to the other. All right, now if I pull that tight, it should bring that down, yeah, I like that. Okay, so now I'm gathering it on the bottom and I wanna gather it enough so it pulls right to that bottom edge like that. And I'm gonna secure it over here on this side in that last little cluster stitch there. Okay, don't pull out. No, it was this one I needed to hold on to. All right. Just want to make sure that stays down. I can pull that. Okay. I think I got it there. And my um, needle has a little rough it tip on it and so it keeps snagging my thread all right so right here okay now I'm gonna these loops are still all free and then I'm gonna go back over here to where I started with the purple right maybe I don't need to I think that might be good enough let me you can always turn it over and check it so my plan is for this to be stretched good onto the jar. I think it looks beautiful. And then these I just want to lay on the ground because they'll look like a little doily sitting on the, um, where I set the, the vase. Oh my gosh, I love it. Look at that thing. That is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, look at that. And then the back just looks, I have to sew this end in, but the back's gonna look like that. But I think it's pretty in the back too. Oh God, I just love lace and crochet and vintage stuff too. So that's basically how you make it. And I'll just secure um, this end right here and it's good to go. And if I ever wanna pull it off, there's no damage done to my vase. And I think it's gonna be gorgeous. And I think in the photograph for this, I may um, put the flowers in it and show you. I guess I'm going to do a video of my new office and you'll see this face in my new office with the flowers in it. But that is how you you um, cover a jar or a vase in, the, um, in a doily. So you just have to be real flexible with whatever vase you have and whatever doilies that you pick. So thank you very much for watching and I hope that you visit Maggie's Crochet.com. Thank you very much.